Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the Mackie Onyx 24 analog mixing board. Let's get some business out of the way. Mackie did send this mixer to me about a month ago or so. There was no money that exchanged hands and they have no idea that I'm making this video. So they have no say whatsoever about what I'm about to say about this mixing board. Now beyond that, I do have a lot of experience with Mackie mixers. I've been using them since the late 90s, essentially from the VLZ line. I've owned many Onyx series mixers as well. And, and to this day, I still use a Mackie Onyx 1640i analog mixer off to the side to do all my main uh, analog routing. It does have Firewire and I don't use the Firewire on that, uh, but that's just my perspective on here. So I, I do use a lot of Mackie products. So the good people over at Mackie did send this to me to check out. And it's kind of had a bit of a rough launch because the supply chain type of stuff, you know, like the, the chip shortage in the world just sucks and has affected so many things, including these mixing boards, because I think these were supposed to come out basically a year ago and they did, but then supply was just like, it's impossible to get, you know? So, but alas, I've used it for the past month, specifically for synthesizer routing. I made a synth wall in the back right there. You can check out a previous video if you wanna know how I set up a slat wall with synths on there. But I used this mixing board as my main routing solution initially to basically bring all the synthesizers into these 24 channels. And then also at times hook up the USB to be able to multi-track those um, out of the board into say like Ableton or something like that. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's talk about the pros and cons here. Obviously, for sub $1,000, you get a lot of preamps and a multi-tracking USB solution, which I think is really great. There is a lot of trade-offs for that sub 1000 though. My 1640i has a lot more routing features. Just straight up, I wouldn't consider replacing my 1640i for this specifically because it's missing so many of those routing solutions. But before we get to those things that are missing in my viewpoint, let's talk about the good things on here because like I said, for a sub 1000, you know, this goes for 950 US, 949.99. Uh, for that type of money, you're able to multi-track 22 channels to a USB interface solution. And that means you can plug into an iPad, you know, or iPhone, or um, obviously any computer type of thing like that. So uh, I used it on a Windows computer with the ASIO drivers, ASIO drivers. <laughs> uh, those were, um, they were good, they're solid. I didn't have any issues with that. So good job, Mackie, on solid drivers. Uh, from what I've experienced so far. The preamps are the, the Onyx preamps and those always have been good, clean preamps. So I haven't had any issues or qualms with that. In fact, the sound of the board itself is like good. You know, it's a clean uh, hi-fi, like, you know, it's not adding additional color or noise to the signal. You're getting a really good clean signal out of the board all the way through the summing channels as well, or the summing, um, things in there in the board. So if you're looking to get this board specifically for analog summing, I don't think it's going to make any difference whatsoever going out of the box or it's staying in the box or something like that. Like you're not going to get any color that's going to be relevant to your mixes with these type of mixing boards, at least in my opinion. So take it for what it's worth on that. But if you do need a bunch of channels that are clean, to get your signals into the computer, or if you wanna capture practices or something like that, this is a great solution. It does have the SD card, and the SD card does not multi-track all of the signals. Unfortunately, it is, uh, it's just the stereo mix out of the board. So you know, there's other solutions out there that are better in that sense, if you do wanna multi-track directly to an SD card, like the Zoom, the Tascam Model 24. But if you do have like, say an iPad that's uh, off to the side, you could just plug in via USB and then set up an app to multi-track everything. That's actually a really good solution as well. So yeah, in terms of an analog mixer, this is, uh, I would say bare bones is the wrong term, but it's pretty close to bare bones because you have, you know, you got your standard low cut across all the channels, which is good, obviously. And then you have high Z on channel one and two, but then the phantom power right here is for all the preamps, which is a bummer, you know? Like, it's always nice to be able to have phantom power on say one or two mics and then the rest be like dynamic mics that don't need the phantom power. But with this, you're, it's either all or nothing right now for this board. So that's kind of one of those things where I feel like it was probably a cost saving feature. It's like if they put phantom power on everything with one switch, it probably saves however much money in the design and manufacturing, so. And again, throughout this whole discussion, you need to keep in mind that this is a sub $1,000 mixer because Every feature you add on top of this that it's missing is going to start bumping it up further and further and further. And like the 1640i was, I think like 1500 bucks or something like that when it first came out. And that's just 16 channels. So 
things you need to keep in mind when uh, when talking about this. So yeah, channels one and two, you got the high Z options right there. You got the EQ, which is good. You know, it's a it's a decent EQ, gets the job done. It's nothing like it, it's not a vibe magical EQ or anything like that. It's just a good like you need to get rid of some high end or low end or like, you know, boost some some mid range does the job gets it done right there. In fact, for a live setting, like for a, uh, a small live performance house, like this is a fantastic mixing board, in my opinion, because of these features like that. So yeah, pretty simple EQ here. You got your 12K, 80 Hertz, and then a sweepable, what is it? 100 to 8K that you can sweep for the mid. However, the last four tracks right here, which are stereo tracks, uh, have more of like a basic one, you know, the, the sweep mid sweep is at um, two and a half K. So a little more basic on that. Also, I'm pretty sure that these EQs are not recorded into the USB line. So they are just analog for this board when you're trying to do like a live mix or something like that. So which which I do think is good because like typically if you're going to bring tracks into a DAW later on to mix, then you want the pure signal. Uh, moving on from there, we have two aux sends, which are basically monitors and then an FX send. So what's different about this is you have like this command center, you can do a bunch of different effects on here. I didn't mess with these too much. I, you know, I checked out the delay and reverb and they sound good. Reverb or delay or some sort of effect system in a pinch, the studio command type of thing works out great. And you can save presets and all that as well. So nice, right? So like, you know, you, you, you got your effects going right here for your channels and you have your uh, effects return that's dedicated into the, the main system, the control center right here. So good stuff right there. Again, nothing, nothing wrong with that. And the effects sound good. This is one of these things though, where the routing really falls behind uh, the previous Onyx line or the one that I'm using the 1640. Like that one has six auxiliary sends. And that also means it's got uh, the stereo returns. I think it has four stereo returns on there for the previous 1640i. So that's missing on here. It's, you know, it doesn't have a ton. Actually, how many stereo returns does it have? Yeah, so this does not have any stereo returns. It's one of those things, you know, it's like, I think they're thinking 15, 16 up to 23, 24 could be considered your stereo return for things. If if the monitor sends were being uh, actual uh, effect sends and not monitors, you know, and you wanted those to be returned for additional effects, you're gonna have to take up some of these channels on there. So some caveats, you know, it's like, it's not really truly 24 channels when you start factoring in some of these other things, especially for the recording side. So again, you're reduced to two monitors right here, uh, which I think is good for live performance type of stuff. Like I said, small venues, this is perfect. No problem whatsoever. You're gonna have plenty of channels. You got your pan, mute, rude solo type of thing, which is all pretty standard and then nice faders. These faders feel good. I like it. These are, I feel, I think they're updated newer faders from the Mackie line. So that's good stuff. Future Tefty here. I totally forgot to talk about the lack of LED signals per channel strip. So what you do have is overload indicators. So if you're clipping the channel, it'll tell you on there. Aside from that, you're missing a signal presence uh, LED, which I use all the time on my 1640i. I like to glance over at my mixing board and see which channels are currently active or getting a signal. And I find that information really useful. So you are not getting that on the Onyx 24 at all. Instead, what you'd have to do is play whack-a-mole with the mute buttons to figure out which channel strip is actually getting the signal, which I don't think is nearly as convenient as just having an LED signal that says, hey, this is currently getting some sort of signal on channel 910 or something like that. Why did they cut the LEDs? Probably to save some money. And then you have left, right, in and out. So you can kill the left, right. In addition to muting a channel, you can just completely take it out of the signal. This is one of these things where it's like, you know, it's missing alternate one, two and three, four. <laughs> like that's what's in the uh, the 1640i. For me, I use alternates one, two or three, four quite a bit because I'll have like all my synths plugged in. And then let's say I want to send like the summit to something to sample. What I would do is just pop in the channels to say like send it to alternate one, two, and then I'd have alternate one, two being sent out to um, say like the NPC live or one or something like that, or the DigiTact to be able to capture a sample and then be able to play back on the, on the tracks. It's not exactly easy on this. I mean, I could do it with the monitors, you know, I could, uh, I could have monitor sends on here, but the, the stereo information is gone when you when you're looking at this stuff so you have to think well you're missing stereo information or you try to patch it in with like you know left right <laughs> where you're doing you know you're juggling left right stereo or monitor sends right here to be able to send 
that type of routing. So this mixer falls short when it comes to those type of things. Again, it's sub 1000 analog mixer that has a lot of flexibility for the USB side to multi-track. So these are the cost savings. You know, they cut these type of features to be able to make this uh, relatively cheap or more affordable. That's pretty much the channel strips right there. And again, you uh, move over to the stereo side. So you have 14 mono uh, channel strips right here. I believe 11 through 14 also has inserts as well. So another one of those cost saving things. All the channels do not all have inserts. Only 11 through 14 have inserts on there. You may or may not use inserts. I actually have in the past. And another thing that is missing from these is direct outs, mainly because it has USB, right? If you have USB in here, you're probably gonna use the USB for direct out. So I understand why those aren't in here. The uh, 1640i has direct outs in all the, the channels. So I actually use those all the time because for the 1640i, I will plug in to the mixer monitor that way so it's analog you know like i'm not having any kind of conversion or anything like that to make a um, delay in the signal but then i'll use the direct outs to go directly into the daw to be able to capture signals so uh, there's some flexibility right there it's more complicated too so not that my solution is better specifically it's more complicated and you have to have a patch bay to properly route everything this is more straightforward and simplified and therefore cheaper as well uh, without sacrificing sound quality, which I think is great because if it didn't sound good Then all the this video wouldn't be happening if it didn't sound good. <laughs> I'd be like not worth it So yeah 11 and through 14 you have inserts on there and then uh, you have these combos 15 16 all the way up to 23 24 so it is marketed as a 24 channel Analog mixer and obviously you can see 24 channels on here. This last 23 24 is a bit of a wild card because you can hook up a Bluetooth signal again great for live if you need to make like a transition mix for a different band to come on or something like that You got your Bluetooth which can go directly from uh, your phone or plug in a aux signal right there eighth inch aux, aux signal So that's really good for the live scenario But when it comes to a studio environment or multi-tracking environment, you're thinking oh, I have 24 tracks, right? Well, actually you have 22 tracks the channels 23 24 on the USB side is the main mix right here. Now, a nice feature for people who are, say, podcasting or streaming is to be able to engage the SND, send, I guess, whatever that is, at send USB, which switches the main mix, the main stereo mix of this board from 23, 24 to channels one and two. You do that, and then channels one and two on your USB interface is everything that's plugged into the mixer, which is great, you know, because sometimes you just want to do a mix. You want to do like a podcast where you have a, a mix discussion, or maybe you're, you have like a small, um, like intimate uh, performance going on and you want to stream it to the internet. You can, um, you can easily set up your mix right here, send it to channels one and two, and then hook it up to OBS. And then OBS can just be like, uh, the Onyx 24 stereo, Boom, you're good to go. Very simple. So that's a really nice convenience feature for today's modern age of, you know, sending stuff online or something like that. So good stuff right there. But what that does mean is that you're not getting 24 channels plus a stereo pair of inputs into the USB interface. You're getting 22 channels. So you need to keep that in mind that if you do want to um, consider track counts, this is basically a 22 input USB device. So you have 20 preamp inputs and 22 raw like signals that can go to the USB interface. Additionally, with these tracks, they double as inputs from the USB device and also this uh, the SD card. So 17, 18, you, can, you have a switch to switch the SD card output in and out. So if you wanna play something from the SD card, 17, 18 will become a dedicated SD card um, channel essentially so once again that removes a potential input if you're considering how many inputs you have for your setup if you are going to use the sd card output then you're going to give up a stereo pair for that same goes for the usb so if you plug this into your laptop let's say you have ableton going and you need to you need to monitor what you're hearing you have to dedicate channel 19 and 20 to the uh, the output of the usb you know you're of ableton and that's gonna take up track 1920 right here. I kind of wish you could change this around or like, I, I wish they would have made it so you could dedicate USB one and two to 23 and 24. So you had the option of like 
you know, Bluetooth, aux input, or USB one and two. I, I feel like, or maybe even this SD card, that would have been ideal. But unfortunately, it's not the case with this. If you want to be able to listen to anything coming out of Ableton or, you know, Logic or whatever your DAW of choice is, Bitwig, you're going to have to dedicate a uh, 19 and 20 as the main stereo out of that device, which is going to take up another track. So the, additionally, there is USB three and four. So you can have four total outputs from the USB device. Uh, and again, it's going to be dedicated to these channels right here. So the last four like channel strips are almost like these wild cards where it's like it's not truly a 24 channel mixer at that point, you know, especially if you're using these features, which leads me to another trade off with this device. You are not going to be able to plug in a USB device and then send a mix from, say, you know, Ableton and then use all these features right here, outputting channels from Ableton. That's not possible with this. You have to literally have another sound device or sound card to be able to output those tracks into this board to be able to, be able to do an analog mix. Like if you liked these EQs really, like if you liked them a lot and you wanted to impart the sound that you're getting and be able to have the hands-on feel of a mix coming out of a DAW to be able to do that, like you, it, you, it's not possible with this without an additional audio interface to send those uh, channels out. You're only getting USB one and two and three, four onto these channels. So you're not doing analog mixing from a DAW directly into this. You might be thinking, well, what mixer does that? The Model 24, Tascam Model 24. Like that is a great example of something that can take the USB or the SD card inputs and map them back out to the channels. You know, you have to hit switches up on the top to do that, but you can do that. And then you can have the, uh, the hands-on feel of controlling a mix live from the board. Should round out the controls right here as well. You know, you do have a control room out, so that's good, pretty standard as well. You have solo master as well. And then you have the phones output. Uh, there's only one phones. I feel like it would have been nice to have two phone outputs. Everything, it feels like there was cost savings with it kept in mind. And speaking of that, I did watch a live stream of the, of the developers talking about this board. And there was a question that came up, like, why is there no one knob compression at the top? And the answer to it, which I thought was surprising, was they wanted to make sure that nothing was going to get in the way of the sound quality of the board. So sound quality was uh, number one. So I found it fascinating that having a one knob mixer in, in the, uh, the signal chain would have affected the sound quality. I'm going to default to the engineers and trust that, you know, they made the right choice because while I like the one knob solutions, generally speaking, if I'm going to record it to a DAW or do a mix afterwards, I usually want to do my own compression. I want to have hands on with a different compressor personally. The one knob compressors are great for live experiences. You know, if you need something to clamp down to make sure it doesn't poke out too, um, too aggressively, then a one knob compressor can do the job great. But if it is going to affect the sound quality in this particular device, I like that they didn't put it in there. So, but with that said, that might be a feature that you're missing. That could be a deal breaker. So I guess we should talk about competition again, sub one, one K it's $950. If you spend an additional 250, so if you go $1,200, I think the next best option a Tascam Model 24. Now this will have some caveats. One of them being that the, the track count goes up to 20. So you are missing a few channels on there. You do get the, the benefit of being able to multi-track everything to an SD card, which is great. I've used the Model 12 in the past and it's a fantastic unit. So although there is some quality control issues that people talked about on there, I, I was surprised to find out that like a lot of people said, hey, my Model 12 is issues falling apart or something like that. And uh, that's a bit of concern. Maybe worth buying it from a reputable dealer. That way you have a return policy just in case there is some issues with your board. So yeah, I would say that the Tascam Model 24 is probably the best competition, but it is $250 more. So if you're willing to spend the additional 250, uh, you, and you're okay with losing a couple tracks, then Tascam Model 24 is going to be a great option right there because it is USB. It's got the SD card. Uh, it's got the majority of these features. It's got effects on there, you know. Beyond that, you also have the Zoom live track. This is a, uh, how many channels is this? This is also 20. Yeah, so 20 channels and multi-track. I have no experience with the Zoom recorders. Well, actually, I have, you know, small Zoom recorders. I use a six channel Zoom recorder right now for recording my voice. But aside from that, from the actual mixers, I have no experience with these uh, digital mixers that they have that go to the SD card. However, this guy only has four outputs on the USB interface. So this is a little bit closer towards the Mackie Onyx. 
if you don't really care about the SD card recording, uh, then the Machionics might be a better option for you because you're gonna get more channels and same amount of outputs for USB type of stuff. So uh, Mackie also has a VLZ4 24 channel mixer, which is more expensive. It's 1350, but this is one of these things where I believe it's only capturing a stereo mix for the USB. So it's not multi-tracking everything, uh, but there's a lot more analog routing. In fact, this is closer to the 1640i that I have in terms of routing and options. So there's no like best of both worlds at least in my opinion, I don't think there's any like perfect solution out there. They're, they all have compromises. Speaking of compromises, uh, I still use my Motu audio interface because um, it's it's an AVB system, so I can have like lots of different audio streams going in and out of it. I can use an audio network type of thing. I still prefer that as my main setup. Um, in fact, I should do a video about that at some point. Maybe I will. Now, if I was on a Mac, I could use Core Audio's aggregate audio, which would be really nice because I could aggregate these 24 channels or 22 channels, I should say, and then connect them with the Motu so I could have like a bigger audio interface that would be synced and be able to multi-track all that stuff. You do introduce some latency when using the uh, aggregate audio type of stuff, uh, but that would be really awesome. If you're on Windows, however, none of that's possible. It's, it's unfortunate that the ASIO drivers do not give you the flexibility to be able to chain multiple devices. Uh, they just weren't written that way, so they never will be. You have to have something like a, a dedicated interface that connects multiple devices, and even then, you're not likely to be able to connect something like a, a Onyx 24 with a setup like that. And I guess that's something that you do need to consider. Like if you're looking for an audio interface and thinking this will double as your mixer and audio interface and all that, it does, but it's also going to be limited if you ever want to expand. So this is what you get with that setup on a Windows computer and you won't be able to expand it beyond that. I mean, you could use ASI for, ASIO for all, but it's got issues, it can be buggy, and then you're relying on Windows Media Driver type of stuff. So I personally wouldn't do that. Just my two cents on that. If you're thinking about like getting something to set up a studio environment, this can do the job, but it's going to miss expandability and connectivity with other devices. Like there's no, there's no digital outs, you know, there's no ADAT out, there's no uh, word clock for syncing with other devices or anything like that. So it gets the job done for a multi-tracking solution, but outside of that, it's not really gonna play nice with other devices in the digital domain. You're fine to route out the, the stereo mix to another interface. It's a great mixing board, it's got its limitations. Ma Mackie definitely did cut some corners to make the cost as low as it is, which, hey, I mean, that, that might be perfect for you. I think a lot of those features, some people just kind of ignored for those systems. So I understand why they cut them out. If you just need to record some bands, great. This is a bulletproof solution. You're gonna have your inputs. You got plenty of mic, mic inputs and all that stuff. You can track 22 channels. You're gonna have a good interface with this and the sound quality is great as well. If you're building a studio, you're probably gonna run into some roadblocks at some point with this. What do you think? Would you consider an Onyx 24? Or maybe even Onyx 16 or something like that? They do have the smaller options as well. I think if I was just starting out and needed a quick interface to be able to route stuff, I think like a 16 or a, or a 12 or something like that could be a great option. But I also think these Tascam model 24, 12, 16s and all that are also excellent options. The market is definitely pretty fierce in this category, but uh, the Onyx 24 is, I believe, the cheapest solution for the, as many track counts as you want. So if you are looking for maximum track counts, I don't think you can beat the Onyx 24 for a brand new mixer. That is also USB multi-tracking capability. But I think that's gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, like button, subscribe, comment below, all that stuff really helps out. If you want to purchase a Onyx 24, if you use our affiliate links, then it definitely helps out with the channel at no additional cost to you. Uh, so definitely consider that if you are interested. And then, uh, you know, if you wanna go one step further, you can always consider our Patreon as well. Um, but that's it, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time for another one. Deuces.